How are you doing today? My name is Louis Lee, and I'd like to introduce the UMAX Conservatory of Music and Arts Guitar Program. Welcome back. This is Guitar Lesson 10. Remember, this is UMAX Conservatory of Music and Arts Guitar Program. Lesson number 10 again, and we're going to proceed with the objective, which is number one, the fair exercise. Now, on the previous lesson, number nine, we did the retrograde of three, of four, three, two, one. This time we're just going to go three, two, one. We're going to just lesson one with that. Let me adjust it. Remember, my metronome right now is set at 73. So my producer told me, I always mention, we're working with 60 beats per minute. So I'm going to have to adjust this downward. 60 beats per minute, set your metronome, okay? And so what we're going to do, I'm going to demonstrate first, then uh, interject with some information, then we're going to all do it together. So remember, we're doing the three. So this is what we're doing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. It's different from the other one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, so if you have that and you're ready, let's do it. Here we go. One, one, two, three, four, one.
Remember, I try to stay focused when you're doing this. It's easy to become distracted. So, what we've done is we've covered a lot. This is the tenth lesson, and there will be more. But I just wanted to make mention that you want to review your previous work as well. Okay, just review it because if you do not, you might forget something. And uh, out of the ten minutes, as you may notice, uh, ten minutes is a lot of time if you're concentrating. Ten minutes is a lot of time. Uh, when you're paying attention to it. So we just did five minutes, so we could easily do something else in between. And you want to do that to mix up. Sometimes just don't go back and do what is predicted. Do something else. Do last week's lesson, or two weeks ago, or do lesson number seven, or lesson number five. You see, just to break the monotony. You see, because if not, we don't want any boredom to set in. So with that in mind, Thank you so much, and that concludes this portion of the finger exercise. Welcome back. This is the theory part of the guitar instruction by Ubex Conservatory Music and Arts, Inc. And this is lesson number 10. Again, the theory. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue with the reading exercise. Now with reading, uh, and let me put my guitar down because I have a speech to give you. With reading, is something that has to be done on a continuous basis. Uh, I read uh, a lot, but it goes up and down. If I don't read for several, well, I've never done that, but um, I just have to practice reading a lot. Uh, some musicians don't, so uh, that's not to say that I'm perfect, because I'm not, but I do read a lot because of just because. And um, it's something you have to do. And what I look for are challenges. I get violin books and saxophone books, uh, which is good, which is a good segue. And I have it right here. You might have heard of this guy. His name is John Coltrane. Okay, so you can see how this book is all soiled and marked and like my Bible. So I've gone through this book, and John Coltrane was one of the great improvisationist players out there that I know of. He was very spiritual too. Um, and I have some of his music, you know, Mr. PC, John Coltrane, if you're in the jazz. So um, I study John Coltrane because he was a saxophonist. Now, what's so ironic is that I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I grew up in a time where music was changing. I grew up in Philadelphia, and I was blessed to meet Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff when I was very young. And I worked with Billy Paul, Sister Sledge, a lot of groups that did a lot of recording. And it was just different. And I studied with a guy named Dennis Sandoli. My dad was very strict, and I think it's in my book in the very beginning. And I had to study with Dennis, and I'm so glad I did. Well, Dennis Sandoli taught John Coltrane. Google it. He taught John Coltrane. And he'll tell you so about everything I'm telling right now. And he was a guitarist. He was an Italian guy. But I didn't know how great he would become because I was in the time. I was in the actual uh, 
transition of it. So you never know what's going to come out of something if you're actually into it. Until you come out of it, then you say, oh, wow, when you look back on stuff, if that makes any sense. But I didn't know that he, he had taught a lot of people, and it was hard to get to him, but because I was working with Kenny Gamble, Kenny Gamble gave me a reference, and, you know, anyway. So I studied with him, but come to find out, he taught John Coltrane, and it's amazing. That's not to say that he is why John Coltrane is who he is, and he might be, I don't know. But it shows the relationship between musicians, how we can learn from each other. It shows how John Coltrane saw something in Dennis Sandoli that he gravitated to and it worked out, whatever it might have been. Dennis Sandoli taught me a lot, which helped me because that's why I was able to play with these people. I had a very vast vocabulary when it comes to just chords and playing and soloing. But I look for other musicians. So that's something that you might want to do. You might want to just delve into other musicians. You want to listen to keyboard players, you want to listen to drummers, you want to listen to saxophone players, because it's a different perspective, you see. This is um, the tenth lesson, and so we're moving into a stage where we're not the very beginning, where we're, be where we're beginners. We're kind of in that intermediate zone. So then I can speak more about this as opposed to have spoken about it in the first lesson. So, I just wanted to say that John Coltrane. Now, to get back to the lesson itself, yes, this right here uh, is a good study piece. You see, we're going to talk about it in general terms. Um, you have to study it. I can sit here and read this for you all day, and if you're not studying it, if you do not apply it, it's not going to really mean a whole lot. And I'm trying to make sure that each lesson is significant and I can reach you. I could sit here and play. No, let's talk. Let's, well, let's not. Let's talk. But let me speak to you, and so you can hear my thoughts, and they can resonate, and then you can take it and do whatever you wish, whatever comes out of it. But take your time. Now, when you're studying a piece like this, or because it's a study piece, take it in increments. Don't try to read the whole music at once. And I'll demonstrate. I'm going to go back to study number four. Study number four. And the, the first, the second, and the third. Well, I'll just do the first and the second measure first. Okay, because it's a little tricky. So it goes one, two, three, four, one. You know, it's all habitual. You know, you just know what to do. 
And that's what comes with playing and practicing and enjoying what you do with the guitar. What you want to do, remember, is practice hard, have fun, and enjoy what you're doing. And that concludes this part of the theory of Lesson 10. Welcome back. This is the fun part of Lesson number 10. And again, this is Eubanks Conservatory Music and Arts Guitar Program. And we're going to uh, look at the chords now. Uh, now, we've covered all of the chords uh, that are on the sheet. And you'll see it on the screen or in some kind of way because I don't know if you can really see this. But anyway, I just wanted to show it to you anyway. And so on this page, we have 15 chords. Three, we have four, eight, 12, 15, okay? So we have 15 chords. And with those chords, you can play a lot of songs. Okay, you can play a lot of songs. Now, there are a lot of chords. Uh, I have a lot of chords in my vocabulary. Uh, if I were to guess, I would know what number to choose, to be honest with you. But I have a lot of chords. But I want to know what those chords are. Some guitar players, they play chords, and you ask them what is that chord, and they don't know. They just, and they could be a great player, but they don't know what the chord is. So it doesn't really, it helps you, but it limits you in the same perspective, okay? So that's why it's important, my point is, to know what chord you're playing. I'm going to set the metronome, just to give you an example. Okay, let's just pick a chord, F major chord. If you're going to play F major, three, four, you know that's an F major. You know it because you studied it. You know it's an F major. Remember the bar chord? Put your first finger on the first two strings, the first fret, your second finger on the third string, the second fret, and your third finger on the fourth string, the third fret. One, two, three, four. You know that's F major. You just know it. So that when you're reading, you know that's an F major. Now, let me show you how chords are, and you can hear. This is an F major, too. I'm going to play a few different F majors. They all sound the same. These are F majors. Now, you see I'm not struggling to say, where are these chords? You want to know, and they're different shapes. Four. Same as that. Now now I'm getting fancy. Okay, so I threw a little fancy one in there just to <laughs> spice it up a little bit. You know, that's not in your vocabulary, but that is an F chord. But I got a little fancy, okay? So I just wanted to show you how you have these options. Now, of course, and I say this to be very humble, okay? I know a lot of chords, but there's a lot of chords that I don't know. And every day I'm discovering new chords on this guitar, and that means I don't know it all. And there's so much that you can learn, and you can explore this, and it's just endless, the possibilities. And that's the perception you want. Never think you know it all. Always be humble so that you can grow, and it'll pay off because the word is you will grow. You'll learn more because you will not reject it, thinking, well, I don't need to know that because I know it all. I'm not saying that you do, I'm just making sure that you do not. This is what you do not want to do, is that you know it all. Because I know, you hear me as your instructor saying, I don't know all the chords. There are so many chords, I know I don't know them all. Okay, and I'm still learning every day. And that's the perspective that you want, is it's a learning process. And if you keep that in mind, you'll grow. The growth process is what you want, as if I don't know it all. Think of it. I did not know it all. So that means I want to learn more. And then you learn more and I still don't know it all. And so what are you doing in the process? You're learning and you're growing. And that's the whole process, okay? So, without a long speech, I think I've spoken enough. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I'm going to turn off the metronome. And that concludes lesson for guitar number 10.